Greetings all, Last Outrider here with another 40k video. Yes, that's surprising now. But this time I'd like to talk about 9th edition Sisters of Battle, Adeptus Sororitas, and the changes that have occurred since the last time I played them. I'm going to start with tactics instead of the fluff. Um... The big changes that I've seen to the sisters is that they have really turned them into female space marines. Interestingly enough, everybody asks, are there female space marines? The answer now is yes. The, the fact that they've allowed for battle doctrines based upon the orders, uh, the Bloody Rose, the Valorous Heart, the Martyred uh, uh, Lady, each now has their own combat doctrine and benefits and bonuses really gives that fate space marine chapter feel to the sisters which basically allows you to create your own sisters order now i mean you've been given these three combat doctrines create your own sisters and then give them one of the doctrines from, from those three choices, and you can now customize your own order of sisters, which I like a lot. And in this case, what I really like is the Bloody Rose. I think the Bloody Rose, it, it, I don't know whether it's just Games Workshop making up for the fact that the sisters were limited to being a mid-range shooting unit for so long. Now that they become one of the deadliest close combat units in the game. But wow. Just wow. I mean, I can go make a whole video on just the Bloody Rose. But I will sum it up briefly. The bonuses that they get to close combat are insane. You, I'm not going to go over all the rules. That would just be pedantic. I'm sure there's a lot of other videos out there that do that. But for my army list now, the way I've changed mine, um, fortunately, I've already had penitent engines and immolators because I liked them. So I'm not going to take a big kick to the nuts for the price <laughs> of those new models, which makes me very happy. But I had uh, two penitent engines, and now with the upgrade to flamers and heavy flamers, and I've always loved Repentia, and now you have what the Zephalim. Um, now the the Repentia were were good for killing low armored and then with the Zephyrum you now have basically specialists at killing heavy infantry and the sisters were already specialists at killing heavy infantry because I focused on having my um, Dominion squads and my Seraphim squads So I'm trying to think about how to how to give my overall strategy. So basically what I have is still a mid-ranged shooty army that is focused on staying behind light and heavy cover, buying fortifications, uh, a bastion, or now they have that battle sanctum, which gives you more miracle dice, which is just perfect. Miracle dice, I think, are, and I'm going to say it, a godsend. <laughs> Definitely, I'm a miracle dice army list. I always take the uh, the the warlord traits as well. The the and and I don't choose. I prefer to roll for two because all of them are close combat, and and two of them are really close combat. I mean, when you're talking about you know hand of the emperor. And, uh, uh, and the passion, this, <laughs> it's insane. But where they really shine and where the miracle dice really come in is that you have to create 
your own miracles. What do you mean? I mean, you've got to go in and create the situations, the impossible situations, that they can change the course of the battle. For me, that's been the guaranteed charge success. Um, I don't leave that to chance. I create the situations where that perfect charge, either it's going in around a terrain or, or from a terrain or even better, from reserve. That is my absolute favorite. Repentia, uh, charging, and, and Xerophim charging from reserve with a guaranteed success. Mm. Um, uh, the, the, the the seraphim also with their oh when the, when <laughs> there are just so many uses for this but yes the guaranteed charge create that insane situation especially where the, the your opponent places their army in some place that they think they can't be charged let them go there. Let them set up in that, oh, nobody can ever hit me here with this, you know, my, my little long-range unit or, or my headquarters unit or my, my heavy weapons unit. Put them someplace where, you know what I mean, they think they're safe. And then you hit them with that from reserve charge, outflanking, outflanking. This is what Repentia do, outflanking Re from reserve charge. Guaranteed success. It's just beautiful. Um, immolator, it, like I said, and they're coming in. You, you throw in the the uh, characters with them. Canonesses, almost always coming in with them. Um, death cult assassins. I <laughs> just love death cult assassins and the fact that they're female figures too. It's just like, oh, it's just so, this is, uh, uh, the, the, I, I use my, um, I still put my, uh, dominion squads because they have the special weapons and the seraphim squads because they have the infernal pistols. Uh, you, I don't want that heavy weapon rule slowing me down so they're charging in and now you have the upgrades to the melta and the upgrades to the flamer and i still throw in a lot of hospitalers because yes even just a few of these just increasing your survivability just a little bit especially with the uh, uh zeppelin squads makes a huge difference especially when you're fighting high point Army lists like uh, Grey Knights or somebody who's really uh, character-heavy uh, Space Marines. Uh, just being able to get him in and hit him, just one or two more surviving sisters, and the extra hits that they can and that they can throw into play um, is is. If they can just take down, when you're doing that, that uh, uh, um, you know, trade figure for figure, and you know, just a few more, just one more casualty on that side, just one more, hey, uh, my six auto wounds uh, rolls can make a huge difference on, on those other high, high point teams um, over the course of a battle. I still keep my full squads of Battle Sisters because... Uh, those take objectives. You know, you got to still focus on, on there are going to be games that are going to be more based about taking objectives. But that's also why you have the Death Cult Assassins. And that's also why you take the Crusaders and other specialist units like that. Always take the Preachers. Always take uh, the Im Imagifiers. Yeah. Um, always take them. Always take them. Anything that can give you... Um, those <laughs> and now always take the battle sanctum with even more extra 
uh, Miracle Dice and the War Gear, which is the is it the litany, is uh, the book. I think it's the book, the one that creates the extra uh, Miracle Dice. Everything, anything that gives me more Miracle Dice, I do it. Anything that gives me, and I don't take allies because, quite frankly, I don't think sisters need allies anymore. Really, um, if you want to be shooty, you can be shooty. They've, they've got fantastic shooting rules now uh, with the, uh, well, no, the Velorious Heart. That gives you your feel no pain. So I, I keep some of those there because, again, there's, your, there's always your Space Marines. But quite honestly, uh, I, I tend to be more on the offensive than defensive. So I still focus on the Bloody Rose. Um, the uh, Martyred Lady is what I do for my shooting units that still stay back. But it's just fantastic, especially when you still put them in fortifications or behind light cover or, or in a bastion or things like that. It's just fantastic. Put your main battle sisters there. Put your, your charge up with your penitent engines and your repentia and, your, and the, uh, the, still the same tactic of seraphim jumping overhead, landing behind with a full squad so you're still talking is it six how many how many infernal pistols do you get I think six comes to mind when you have a, a when you can put in a, a leader and that's just insane I mean that's just wiping out whole units of space marines definitely wiping out whole units of of gray knights uh, so I'm really excited about what they've done with the sisters and all of this is only multiplied when I still keep them in fortifications because it's just, it's just great. Yeah. I don't take allies with them. I didn't take them before. I definitely don't take them now. Just throwing your inquisitor, your death cult assassins and uh, crusaders for taking you know, uh, table quarters, hide those in a corner somewhere, let people come and try to dig them out. And that's why I really, really like them. What I'm interested in, now I said I was going to talk about the fluff. On the fluff side, well, the problem with the fluff side is that somehow you're going to have to work sisters into the 40K background story again i mean they popped up after the age of apostasy but the daughters of the emperor existed before that and we don't know as much about them really but they existed and where did they come from now some people are obviously just assuming that this is you know some isolated versions of the of the silent sisters that were left on a planet somewhere and you know what I mean turned into daughters of the emperor after several hundred years or whatever which is fine um, but somehow they're going to have to work out how the sisters can be traced back all the way to the Horus heresy because right now, you know, like when the Primarchs start popping back up and Gilliman and everything like that, like, who, who are these people? What? The Sisses? The, the Deptus Sororitas? Well, I, never, I never even heard of those before. It's a, you know what I mean? They wouldn't. So, yeah, I don't know how. The, they, the books still are very shy in mentioning them. So there's not really much to say about them fluff-wise. Un until I'm sure that Games Workshop has some plan for having them have not only a bigger role in the future, but also retconning them into a bigger role in the past. That's what I'm interested in seeing. And uh, I'll be excited to read it and tell you about it when I find out. Until next time, bye. <laughs>